Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Talchelnik of Ivan, and I would like to present to you a European and so non-Paninian non -Paninian approach to Sanskrit morphology based on the works of one of the most prominent Russian linguists, Andrei Zelezniak. Uh, it's the first time that this approach um, crosses Russian border, so uh, it may, might be uh, a little bit uncommon to you, but uh, today I'll try to show uh, that it's worth your time. Uh, so, uh, yeah. First, uh, let me quickly introduce ourselves. Uh, this is our team. Uh, this is me. I am responsible for the theoretical part. Uh, Andrei Shirobokov is responsible for coding. Unfortunately, he uh, is not here today. And Marcis Gassens uh, lead us, is our leading uh, administrator. So, and... Magic. And this person uh, is the author of the approach, Andrei Zalisnik, uh, in his article, Morphological Classification of Verbal Roots of the Ancient Indian Language. Uh, he uh, set out the core ideas of it uh, as uh, a data source. Uh, he used uh, Whitney roots, and so primarily uh, Dewey plus Oliver Hallux corpus. And unfortunately, this article uh, hasn't been translated to English yet. Uh, so, uh, let me point out some... Oh. Yes. Okay, uh, let me point out some uh, issues in traditional European way to um, formulate uh, grammatical rules for Sanskrit. For example, let's take one of the simplest uh, rules of Whitney's grammar, the rule for future stem. And Whitney states that the root uh, with the suffix sia or the future stem has the guna strengthening. So in every pair, A and B, if A verbal root and B is the suffix sia, A turns guna. And uh, as you can see, it uh, works well, but sometimes uh, it doesn't. Uh, some roots uh, refuse to take guna and remain in vridhi grade or in the basic grade. And if we turn to Whitney's roots, um, we can find among uh, approximately 820 independent verbal roots, uh, 110 that uh, just don't have guna grade. So uh, Whitney's rule uh, about uh, future stem generates 110 exceptions, and exceptions is a, a really bad thing for uh, computational linguistics because exceptions equal uh, working by hand. So our goal is to decrease the number of exceptions, and here uh, Zelizniak's approach um, is um, uh, Zelizniak approach can uh, help us a lot. Uh, so, first step of the approach is a classification of Sanskrit phonological processes. Uh, there are two, three groups. First is a pure alternation. Uh, it occurs in specific alternating phonemes of the verbal roots or in the suffixes, uh, and so on. And it doesn't depend on the surroundings of these alternating phonemes, so it's just basic guna and vridhi. And uh, the two other um, group of groups of processes are just different kinds of sandhi or phoneme surroundings dependent changes. Uh, the second group of processes occurs only in the alternating elements of the verbal roots and general roots of sandhi uh, may occur everywhere. Um, so, alternation, pure alternation. Um, Zelizniak introduces um, 13 alternation series, uh, 13 sets of basic guna and vridhi grade for uh, 13 alternating morphemes. For example, uh, the series A1 uh, has uh, zero sound as basic, as in santi, uh, third plural, uh, A short as guna grade, and A long as vridhi grade. 
And here you can see all reconstructed phonemes that uh, we use, um, especially uh, M and N vowels uh, reconstructed from Proto-Indo-European. Uh, we use them in case uh, where the basic grade uh, has no uh, clear form. Uh, for example, uh, the basic grade of root G of uh, series E1 is G, so it's very clear, but uh, the basic grade of gum, for example, uh, is sometimes ga, sometimes gum, sometimes gum, and sometimes gun, so uh, it uh, doesn't have clear form, and we use a reconstructed phoneme. So, uh, verbal root sandhi, here you can see all uh, laws of verbal root sandhi, uh, with the usage of C for consonants, V for vowels, and E for alternating phonemes of the verbal roots. Uh, the only necessary requirement that E is belong to the verbal root, and C or V may belong to the root, suffix, infix, or to the ending and the alternating phonemes of the verbal roots to uh, transform according to these laws. And uh, finally, about phonological processes, uh, in that is neck based approach, uh, they occur in this particular sequence. Uh, for example, let's make uh, a word uh, they were born from reduplicated jan uh, with the uh, ending us, so first step. Uh, and in us expected basic grade from the root, and it remains in basic uh, with uh, n, uh, n long. Uh, second step, verbal root sandhi, n long, reconstructed n long, uh, when preceded by a reduplicated syllable and followed by a vowel, become consonant n, dental n, and uh, the third, uh, step is general sandhi, and before G uh, becomes ny. So the final form is jejunus, and uh, every pair of morpheme A plus B uh, may be uh, divided into three steps, three processes in this sequence uh, for all possible uh, pairs of morpheme in uh, Sanskrit. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the main question still remains uh, how to choose right grade on the first step, because here we choose uh, basic grade, but how? And uh, here, Zalesniak introduces uh, concepts of morphological position and alternation type. Mm, let's define morphological structure as a pair of, phoneme, of morphemes A plus B, and in uh, such structure, morphological position is the expectation of some grade in every A with a certain B. So if we have certain morpheme B, uh, it um, expects some grade, vridhi, guna, or basic, from every preceding morpheme. Uh, no matter uh, if it's verbal root or suffix, uh, as you can see on the examples. Uh, first, uh, A is a verbal root as to B, and it uh, turns guna. And uh, in the second case, A is a suffix uh, nu, and it also turns guna. So we can derive a rule that uh, if B equals and in T, uh, A uh, will be guna, but uh, not so will be uh, the ending t expects guna from uh, a from every a but just expects and not makes a guna because uh, still uh, still uh, some <laughs> morphemes um, do not have guna grade, such as optative suffixes yar and e. Uh, the first is a fixed vridhi, and uh, the second is a fixed basic grade. So uh, yes. sometimes a is guna, but sometimes not. Guna is only expected. And uh, in this approach, we 
establish rules not only for the expectations as uh, Whitney did, uh, but we also um, establish rules for matching this expectation with the reality, with uh, what grades uh, morpheme, especially verbal root, uh, which grades it has. Uh, so, uh, three morphological positions according to three uh, grades Sanskrit uh, has. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, with these three uh, different expectations, so basic, guna, and ready grade, uh, we can uh, define a pattern for A in these three uh, cases with these three uh, expectations. So in simple terms, uh, alternation type is uh, which grade uh, morpheme A takes in case of which expectation. So the first type as the root cr uh, always uh, match the expectations. So if uh, basic grade is expected, it becomes basic and so on. Uh, the morphemes of the first type uh, have all three grades and can be used as a criterion uh, to know what was expected because it uh, they uh, becomes what uh, what was expected from them. Uh, the morphemes of the second type uh, does not have a basic grade, so on the expectation of the basic grade, they um, become guna, has svarita, from root svar to sound, not svurta or svrita. Uh, the third type is a fixed basic grade, and the fourth type is a fixed vridhi. Uh, so, Returning to the witness uh, issues with a lot of uh, exceptions, uh, his rule uh, produces 110 exceptions and efficiency less than 87%. Um, but if we uh, reformulate this rule in Zelle's next terms, uh, so future suffix sia just expects guna from every preceding morpheme. And uh, if we are aware of alternation type of all Sanskrit verbal roots that are uh, 820, not so much, um, if we are aware of the alternation type and aware of the expectation, we uh, could uh, easily match, uh, match them and uh, the efficiency of this rule with the expectations, only expectations, of uh, the guna tends to 100%. So uh, again, if we are aware of morphological position and uh, alternation type, our rules becomes uh, almost perfect. So uh, with this uh, zelesnak based approach, we uh, achieve uh, some results uh, for uh, four months of work. Uh, so, for explaining Sanskrit morphology, we uh, had to determine alternation type for all possible morphemes A, uh, verbal roots, noun roots, suffixes, infixes, and prefixes, and determine morphological position to all possible uh, following morpheme for suffixes, infixes, and endings. And count all possible pairs of A and B, so all possible pairs of uh, two uh, morphemes. Uh, it required a database of all Sanskrit morphemes with their fundamental morphological characteristics. Uh, and for the verbal roots, it's uh, done and uh, uh, work in progress now for verbal affixes and nominal endings. Uh, and uh, nominal derivation is a uh, project in plans uh, today. Uh, next, it uh, required algorithmization of verbal roots reduplication in all uh, possible cases separately, and uh, the work uh, has been completed. Uh, third, the set quality 
uh, the rules for insertion, the connecting vowel E. Uh, it uh, has been done for um, verbal derivation and uh, uh, hasn't been started for nominal derivation also. And uh, for um, fourth, uh, making three of all possible morpheme combinations. So for the verbal system, it's done. Uh, this tree generates uh, 160 uh, combinations of word, uh, verb uh, categories. And for nominal system, it, uh, the work has just been started. Okay, and our nearest goal is to create a computer Sanskrit word form generator that is verifiable and ready for verification of already existing generators and comprehensive as much as possible. And for example, uh, of comprehensiveness, I have a word from uh, a text that I study is Naishkarya Siddhi of Sureshwara, the disciple of Shankaracharya. Uh, so it's a uh, causative desiderative past passive participle and you definitely uh, cannot see this participle uh, in Indria's screenshot so speaking about already existing generators uh, and we uh, already have such forms causative desiderative optative for example and uh, this also uh, very important to uh, solve the problem with uh, present classes be uh, because for the root uh, curve in ingress generator uh, you can see only uh, eighth class but uh, in Texas in, if we take all Sanskrit texts from Rig Veda uh, to uh, the time when Whitney lived, uh, we can find that uh, Kerr uh, has uh, first, second, five, and uh, five, fifth, and eighth uh, classes of presence. So uh, it should be four uh, forms for every uh, ending to make it really comprehensive, not only the eighth class. Uh, and uh, we also, uh, our generator, I mean, uh, excuse me, I have a pro problem with, with this. Uh, Maybe we can spare some time for questions. No. Uh, okay, a uh, uh, few last sentences. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, on, in our generators, uh, you can also uh, click on the form and uh, it will show you the details of generating it, so all the details. Uh, okay, I have no time uh, speaking for program architecture, uh, but now uh, here is a link to GitHub of Andrei Shirobokov. Uh, and uh, we have some implements. Uh, so ability to generate uh, 125 uh, verbal forms among uh, 160 possible. Uh, we also implemented verification of generated forms in textbooks and in uh, the corpus of bilingual texts uh, in Sanskrit and in Russian. Um, and uh, the morphological analyzer and uh, some helping tools for Panini codification uh, are also coming soon in our project. Uh, so, and that's why we need verification because some forms are really suspicious as this triple root gum at Gigi Gamsha. I really don't know uh, if it's possible or not in Sanskrit, but it seems to me uh, really suspicious and I uh, want to uh, see it somewhere in the text. Uh, so, it uh, will be uh, really useful to imply corpora in uh, the generator. So, uh, <laughs> that's all that I have. Thank you for your attention. Here's all the links.
Okay, thanks, Ivan. We have time for some quick questions. Over to. Uh, you have taken 820 routes. Uh, how did you come with, uh, because morning when Sampadananda Mishra presented, he said there are 2,000 routes, verbal routes. So how did you, what is this number 820 versus 2,000? I uh, used uh, Whitney, uh, Whitney's routes uh, and uh, searched in this book and found approximately uh, 820 independent verbal routes. So it's... Uh, Whitney's works. <laughs> okay. So uh, maybe it should be correlated with Parini's 2000 verbal roots, independent verbal roots, and um, see. So you can check maybe the same, uh, the this thing that you have, the whole paradigm, it might work for the other roots also. Probably it should be checked with other roots. And probably I'll take the other discussion outside with alternation yeah. type. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now uh, we had only time to, for searching in Whitney, but uh, in future we, uh, of course, will. Uh, include some other sources for uh, searching uh, morphemes that or morphemes that Whitney uh, uh, Whitney had lost. Uh, so I have a doubt regarding this uh, karishyati. That is the form karishyati. Kru followed by sia suffix. Yes. Sia. Uh, Kru. Sia. There are two operations you have discussed, it, right? One is guna and the other one is e. It's an augment, right? Uh, karshyati and karishyati. Yes. So, uh, yeah, just okay. I have... Uh, in, uh, <laughs> also in uh, Whitney's, uh, Whitney Roots, uh, there are two forms, karishyati and karshyati. So, uh, it just systemizes uh, Whitney's grammar. So my question is, so there are two operations to be applicable, right? One is the augment E and the other one is guna. How will you resolve this conflict? First, you are going to apply the E or the guna. Uh, we can apply guna and uh, such quality uh, same time. Uh, that's just because uh, root kr uh, is some kind of wet. Uh, so uh, it has some uh, some f uh, free choice to uh, include or not include uh, this uh, e. Okay, so thanks again. So for your demo. So in the interest of time, we will break for lunch now. So let's thank Yvonne again.